Hey there, in this video we are going to use the method of factoring and the zero product property to look for zeros of quadratic functions and solutions to quadratic equations. Let's do that right now. Alright, so if we're going to look for x-intercepts or zeros of quadratic functions uh, like that that are in standard form, the thing that we have to recognize is that x is in more than one place and these terms are not like terms. We cannot combine those together. So we're not going to be able to use uh, the technique of isolation, so we're going to have to uh, try something else here. And what we're, going to, what we're going to use is this technique of factoring. And what that relies on is something called the zero product property. So we're going, to, we're going to start the same way by recognizing that to find the x-intercepts, we need to look where y is 0. So we're going to put a 0 for y, and then we're going to look at what we have here. So we have a function that looks like this. Again, we can't isolate it because those cannot be combined together. So what we are going to do is uh, we're going to factor this using binomial factoring. Now, this does not have a common factor. So what I'm going to have to try then is to try and break it into two binomials because it follows that pattern of something squared, something x, and just a constant on the end. Uh, the two binomials I can break it into are going to start with x because this is an x squared. You first want to look at the first term because that's going to tell you the first thing in your two binomial brackets. And then you want to look at the last thing. And that's going to give you an idea of what you're going to try for the last thing there. And then we're going to look to see if we can get the middle term to be right. This being a 12 here, we have a few different things to try. I like to just do this by kind of educated trial and error here. If this is 12, I can try a 3 and a 4, a 2 and a 6, or a 1 and a 12. It's negative, so I know that I'm going to have to make them opposite in sign. So let's say I just tried something like a 3 and a 4 here. And just for the sake of argument, let's say I made that one minus and that one plus because they have to be opposite in sign to get that minus 12. To check whether we have this right, we have to get the correct middle term here. The middle term, when you were multiplying out those two binomials, comes from two places. It comes from the inside and the outside terms. So if I think about what I have there, I have plus 3x and I have minus 4x. That definitely does not add together to give me that minus 4x there. So it's this is not the right way around. And even if I change the signs and made it negative positive there, it's still not going to be right because it would just flip the signs around and it wouldn't have the right number. So you can tell pretty quickly that that one's not it. And you can also tell pretty quickly that this one's not it because if I have a 1 and a 12 in there, I'm still going to have a problem because I'm going to have plus 1x minus 12x. Plus 1 minus 12 doesn't give me my minus 4 there either. So what it is going to be, the only other thing we can try is the uh, plus 2 minus 6. This gives you plus 2x. This gives you minus 6x. If you were multiplying that out, the middle term comes from those two. Plus 2 minus 6 is correct, so those factors are right. Now, that seemed like a lot of work. Depending on how good at factoring you already are, uh, is going to dictate how fast you can do this. And you might say, you know, how does that help? You haven't, you haven't solved anything yet. Uh, but what we have here is we have one thing times another thing. And this is where the zero product property is going to come in. We have two things that multiply to zero. This times this equals zero. If I was to ask you, what if I had a times b equals zero? What could you tell me has to be true about at least one of those things? If you have two things that multiply to zero, you know that one of them has to be zero. So if this is true, if a times b equals zero, either a equals zero or b equals zero. So we're going to use that property here because we have two things that multiply to zero. So either this is zero, so I am going to set it all by itself equal to zero or this factor equals 0, x minus 6 equals 0. If x plus 2 is equal to 0, that's pretty easy to solve. x is negative 2. And if x minus 6 is equal to 0, x is 6. There are two solutions to this equation, and you find them the simplest way by factoring like that. So if I was to write my solution, I'd say it's negative 2 or 6. You can check 
for yourself. I don't have tons of room here to check, but I'll do that down here. And I'll do it as fast as I can. If I take my original equation here and just double check that that gives me zero, uh, we can see if we've done this right. All right, so I'll do that as fast as I can over here. All right, so that works. One of them works. I could go back and do the exact same thing with the six and you'd find it works, but I'll leave that for you to do on your own. All right, let's try the next one here. We are going to, again, finding the x-intercepts, need a zero there, because that's what we're looking for. We have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. This one's different because it's a leading coefficient here. Uh, but we're still going to use this idea that it, it doesn't have a common factor. If it had a common factor, I could actually divide it out. It doesn't have a common factor, though. So uh, what I can do then is just say if this first term is 2x squared, this is going to be 2x, this is going to be x. I'm next going to look at the last term the last term being negative 3, I only have one pair of numbers I can try there, and it's 3 and 1. Except if this is a 2x and this is an x, I have to try it both ways around here. I have to try 1 and 3, and 3 and 1. So let's say I put 3 and 1 here first, and just see if this works. If one of these has to be, this is minus 3, so one of them has to be plus, one of them has to be minus. Let's just say I made that one the plus and that one the minus and see what I get. This gives me minus 3x. This gives me plus 2x, right, because it's plus 1 times 2x, right? You can't forget about that coefficient at the beginning there. That does not add up to plus 5x. It, it looks like it almost does, but they're opposite in sign. Minus 3x plus 2x is just minus x. So that's not the right way around. Changing the sign isn't going to change the number that I get, so I actually am going to have to flip these around here. And I'm going to put the 1 there and the 3 there, and we'll see what we get here. This is minus 1x. That is plus 6x. That gives me the right middle term. So that means that those two binomials multiply out. You can work backwards to multiply them out to make sure that you get that, but we're going to, we know that they do. So then we're going to say either this factor is zero or this factor is zero. Solve each one equal to zero and you'll find out what you have here. If 2x minus 1 equals zero, it means 2x is 1 and x is 1 divided by 2. If x plus 3 is equal to zero, x is negative 3. So my two solutions here are x equals 1 half or negative 3. You could go back and check the same way I did here. I'll let you do that for yourself. I'll try another one here. Now these are quadratic equations. They're not functions. They're not y equals something. They're just an equation that uh, has an x squared term in it. So they're quadratic equations, but you can apply the exact same thing here. We can solve these by factoring and using that zero product property. If we want to use factoring and we have stuff on either side here, we can't have that. This is only going to work. Remember that if we look at the zero product property up here, look back at it. This only works if you're uh, if you have zero on one side of that thing. If this said four here, you can't say anything for sure about that. A and B could be two each, or they could be four and one, or they could be eight times 0.5. You don't know what it is if there's a different number there. If this is a zero, that's the only way you can say for sure what's happening there. So what we need to do is rearrange this equation, get everything to one side so that it has a zero on one side. So I'm going to move that 10 to the other side. And I'm going to make this x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals zero. Then I can try factoring it. This one's not going to be too tough because I just have x and x. And then only I have a couple things to try for that last term. That last term being negative 10, I only have 2 and 5, 1 and 10. So let's say I tried 10 and 1. If I decided I wanted to make that one plus that one minus because that's negative, so they got to be opposite in sign, this is not going to work. Minus 1x plus 10x is not it. So it instead has to, you have to use the 2 and the 5. If I put the 5 there and the 2 there, that's going to be the signs the right way around and the numbers the right way around because I have minus 2x and plus 5x. Those add together to give me the right middle term. So I know that that's right. That's the right factored form there. 
right? So I've taken it from standard form and put it in factored form, and I'm going to use that to solve the equation. Remember, you're not factoring it just for the sake of factoring. You're trying to solve for x here. x in this case is either what you get when x minus 2 is 0, which is just the opposite of that, 2, or what you get when x plus 5 is equal to 0, or in other words, x equals negative 5. So if I want to write my solution here, I can just write x equals 2 or negative 5. All right, those are my two solutions. Check them if you want to. Put them back in the original equation up here, and uh, you'll find that they work. Last one. Now this one looks a little more complicated. X in is in a lot of different places here. Uh, we need to, if we're going to use the zero product property, get everything all to one side, all brackets expanded out, then try to factor it. All right, so first thing, if we have this over here, if this had already had a zero over here, that'd be fine. It's already factored. But it's the fact that it has that, that 8x on the other side, unfortunately, means we're going to have to multiply that out. And we have 3x squared plus 6x, and then we have 8x over here. Now, I'm going to bring this to this side because I want to, I like it to keep that term positive there. If I bring that to the other side, I'm going to have zero on that side. I have 3x squared, but I can combine it with this 6x here. So if I make that minus 8x, if I bring it to the other side, and I'm going to have 3x squared minus 2x. All right, let's write that up here. Now, if I'm going to try and factor this, um, the thing is, this doesn't have what I had up here, which is this constant third term in there, that c value. But that doesn't matter because actually this is an even easier kind of factoring. This has a greatest common factor. So all I need to write for one of the factors is what it has in common, which is x. That is the greatest common factor. And it's going to leave me with 3x minus 2. These two things multiply out to that. It doesn't matter that one of the factors is just an x. Because actually what that means, remember, we still just have two factors here. We have x times... 3x minus 2. So either x is 0, and that's it. That's one of the values. When you have an x all by itself like that as one of the factors, then 0 is one of the solutions. Or 3x minus 2 is 0, which means 3x is 2, which means x is 2 thirds. You could write it as a decimal if you want. You can leave it like that. I am going to write, I'm kind of out of room here, but my two solutions are zero or two thirds. The two solutions to that equation. You can put them in and check. Zero is a really easy one to check actually because it just makes a lot of things equal to zero. All right? So that's using factoring to solve quadratic equations and find x-intercepts of quadratic functions.